Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. All Blacks taking on Uruguay this week. First game of the final round of pool play. We're going to go through some squad stats, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how you reckon this one is going to go. First ever meeting between the sides, so there's a kind of little bit of extra something uh, between these sides for that one. It's something that happens quite a lot at Rugby World Cups. We see sides meeting for the first time. And um, yeah, the All Blacks, they need to get another win. Uh, from a New Zealand point of view, that's what we're kind of all expecting them to go through and uh, get out of pool A, basically, and then see what happens with that other pool, which is pool B. But um, in terms of the squads, New Zealand has made a number of changes from the side that played Italy and gave them a big old walloping uh, the other day. They've rested some of their guys and brought back some of the guys who have had a bit of a lack of game time. Tuomo Fassi, Taylor, and Lomax. That's your front row. So Lomax is up from the bench after kind of coming back from that leg injury. Now that he's had a bit of game time from the bench, he seems to be ready to start. Sam Whitelock's going to get a start as well. And what I think is his 150th game, which is a heck of an achievement. So the most capped All Black ever. Quite an achievement. And then Tupovai is back into the 23 starting alongside him. Shannon Frizzell is another guy maybe a little bit in need of game time, so he's there at number six. Sam Kane, likewise, started from the bench against Italy, up starting and back as captain at number seven. And then Luke Jacobson, who's been sitting for a little bit, uh, is there at number eight. There's no Adi Savia in the squad for this one. He is being rested. They asked about that in the press conference. And yeah, Fozzie basically said he wants to get him some gas back in the tank. Cam Roygaard also gets a start this week. And Finlay Christie is your backup halfback. So there's no Aaron Smith. It seemed like Aaron Smith was going to basically play every game, but he is finally getting the rest. Uh, Fozzie said he's been happy with Cam Roygaard thus far, but the one work on for him is to improve his passing accuracy because we know all the other aspects of his game, especially his ball carrying, seems to be pretty tidy. Richie Moonga continues on at number 10. No... Um, no change to put d -Mac at 10, which we thought might happen for this one, but d -Mac is in the starting 15. Uh, Jordy Barrett and Anton Leonard Brown, that is your midfield. So Jordy's another guy who's, you know, having missed out in the first couple of games, adds to his minutes, and then Anton is up from the bench. Wings are Will Jordan and Leicester Feingot-Nuku. I think a lot of All Blacks fans would like to see Leicester more available in the squad, but it is pretty competitive in those wings. And then Damian McKenzie, I mentioned him. He is there at fullback rather than 10. Uh, Bench-wise, Samasone Tokiaho, Tamaiti Williams, and Fletcher Newell are your front row replacements. So Tokiaho and Newell are back into the 23. Scotty Barrett drops to the bench. Ethan Blackadder, who was one of the injury call-ups, he is into the side in the number 20 jersey. Finlay Christie is up uh, into the 23. Bodhi drops to the bench. And Caleb Clark... Uh, is in the 23 jersey. They did say um, that David Harvey would have been in the squad, but he's got a bit of a niggling hamstring injury. Otherwise, yeah, he would have played. So Leicester Feinke Onuku is essentially covering the midfield for this one. Um, Whitelock, interestingly, behind Dalton Papali'i, is the All Blacks' top tackler for this competition thus far. So he's certainly been uh, getting into a bit of work. And a number of the guys who are the kind of stats leaders for the All Blacks, like Dalton, in terms of tackles, like Artie for carries and offloads, uh, are being rested. Mark Talia with the clean breaks and whatnot. Although I think um, I think Caleb Clark's top for clean breaks, so we'll see if he can do any damage from the bench. For Uruguay, they have made a few changes from the side that beat Namibia in their last game. Uh, they have kept the front row uh, stable, though, with Sanguinetti, Kessler, and Arbelo, but they've brought in Dotti into the second row in place of Aliaga, who I think is Uruguay's top tackler. So I haven't seen if he's injured or if it's just a, uh, a swap. But either way, Leindaka, who is uh, his second row partner, is also one of the top tacklers for Uruguay. So they do get through through some tackles. Ardao, Civeta, and Diana, that is the back row. So Ardao is the only guy who keeps his jersey number with Civeta coming off the bench. And Diana is uh, back into the 23. Uh, Adal, even uh, Steve Foster, Ian Foster highlighted uh, Adal's work at the breakdown as being a potential threat. So they will look to uh, make sure he's not able to get over the ball. They've been looking to clean him out. Arata and Echeverri continue on at 9 10. They've been a heck of a combo, setting up a lot of line breaks and tries between the two of them. Uh, Villaseca is still captain at 12. Enciate comes into the 23 at 13. Mieres is at 14, coming into the 23. And Nicolas Freitas is on the left wing. The All Blacks will need to watch that guy. He is their top 
kind of clean break merchant in this Uruguayan squad. And then Rodrigo Silva, the veteran, comes in at 15 in place of Amaja, who has been a dangerous fullback. So, um, yeah, he's one weapon who's out of the squad, but a veteran to replace him. They've also brought in Benitez and Piculo as your two prop replacements. And then Santiago Civeta is also into the match day 23 on the bench. Interestingly, when you look at the stats of Uruguay, they have managed more clean breaks than their opponent in all three of their games. More clean breaks than France, more clean breaks than Italy, more clean breaks than Namibia. I mean, the All Blacks managed a lot more clean breaks against Namibia and Italy by a, a handsome number, but they didn't do so against France. The French defense was, um, you know, very much kind of up to the task, but New Zealand's absolutely run riot in their last two games. So, uh, yeah, Uruguay will need to be will need to be very, very sharp. And they'll need that man Ardal potentially to, to pilfer some ball and stop the All Blacks from getting that quick ball that they love. Uh, but, I mean, Uruguay's results have been encouraging. Them and Portugal, I think, uh, of the teams maybe not expected to get out of their pools, results have been really respectable. 27-12 against France, which, as uh, Ian Foster mentioned, is a similar scoreline to the All Blacks' result against France, even though it was a changed French side. Still, it's worth what it is. Uh, they lost 38-17 to Italy, and then they beat Namibia 36-26 after a bit of an early scare. So, um, yeah, it is on Thursday at Lyon. It's a 9 o'clock kickoff, which is perfect for us in New Zealand because that means 8 a.m. in the morning. Wayne Barnes, my screen's flickering. Wayne Barnes is the ref. Predictions-wise, the All Blacks are predicted to romp home, according to the bookies, by 69 points. The rugby forecast algorithm is a little bit more conservative it says by 51. So, yes, it's a good chance for these guys from the Uruguayan side to get more experience against one of the top sides in the world. And for the All Blacks, they need to go out and get themselves a win and get out of Pool A. But, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game. How do you reckon it's going to go? And uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.